Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 68 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. This is a case of PCI of a branch osteo lesion. The patient presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction and was found to have an ulcerated lesion at the origin of the second obtuse marginal branch. And the first question is, this is a bifurcation, but what Medina classification is this bifurcation? And the options are 100, 010, 001, or 101. And this is a basic application of the Medina classification, which is as follows. It has three numbers. The first number is the main proximal vessel. The second number is the distal main vessel. And the third number is the side branch. So in this particular case, we have no disease in the main vessel proximal or distal, but there is disease in the ostium of the side branch, and this is a Medina 001 bifurcation. So this is a branch ostia lesion, Medina 001 bifurcation. In ostia lesions, it is important to do multiple projections. This is an example where the areocranial does not really show the lesion at the ostium of the obtuse marginal branch. However, the LAO cranial does nicely demonstrate the ulcerated lesion at the origin of the OM2. Second question, what is wrong in this image? First one is this deep guide engagement. Second, subselective guide. Third, losing wire position. Or fourth, limb. And the answer here is the limb. What we're seeing is the hand. This is the patient's hand that is in the picture. Of course, we don't want to have anything, not only because it interferes with the image quality, but also uh, because it increases the radiation dose for both the patient and the operator. So both the patient and the operator limbs need to be outside from the X-ray field. Coming to the strategy, how many wires should ideally be used for treating this uh, 001 Medina lesion? One wire, two wires, or three guide wires? And what I could propose is that two guide wires are needed regardless of the type of technique used, which we'll discuss in a second. The reason is that, uh, of course, there's a wire needed in that OM2. But if uh, there is no wire into the distal circumflex and then the stand placed in the OM2 protrudes too far back into uh, the main vessel, it may have a hard time wiring or the wire may go through the stands, through the struts of the stand, which can make treatment much more difficult. So I would suggest placing wires in both uh, the OM2 as well as the distal circumflex. And the next question, building upon the previous one, is what is the technique that should be used, or conversely, what is the worst standing technique for this patient. And then finally, in my opinion, the worst uh, standing technique is the SKS, or simultaneous kissing stance. The reason is that when two metal barrels are placed next to each other, there is a new carina being formed, and then it's very hard to advance equipment through this, both wires, which may go through this carina, or uh, balloons and stands that can hang down. So regardless of the technique, Simultaneous kissing stand is the worst technique and should ideally only be done in cases of emergency because it is a fast technique. The challenge in this case, and for branch ostia lesions that have an angulation different than 90, is that if one places a stand right to the ostium, then part of the ostium is not covered, which can lead to higher stenosis rate. Conversely, if the stand is extend it to go all the way into the main vessel, either a little bit or a lot, then the ostium is covered, but then we have this stand staying in the main vessel, creating issues with the uh, delivering equipment in the main vessel. So there are different ways to uh, overcome this problem, and one way is the mini crust technique, in which a stand is placed all the way into the main vessel, and then crushed with a balloon rewired, and uh, a kissing balloon inflation is performed. So our initial plan here was to perform mini crush, and we inserted two workhorse guide wires in the distal circumflex and OM2, but then after wiring there was loss of undergrade flow. So what would be the next best step? A. Balloon pump, B. Impeller, 
sea balloon or the stingray system? And the answer here is a balloon. We use the workhorse wire, so although there is a concern that we dissected, I think the concern is low with the workhorse wire. Also, this is a small vessel, so loss of flow is unlikely to lead to hemodynamic compromise. Therefore, we don't need uh, support devices. So there's no need for the entry because it's unlikely we're subintimal, and there's no need for hemodynamic support devices. Sure enough, we inserted a 2.0 millimeter balloon and performed a brief balloon inflation, and this was enough to restore undergrade great flow into the vessel. So here we are now, we do have wires in both vessels, we do have um, restoration of undergrade T3 flow in OM2, but there's something wrong here. And the question is, is this the balloon, is this the guide, is this the wire, or is this the angulation? And the answer here is the guide wire. If we look at the OM2 wire, it is actually into a small side branch of the second obtuse marginal branch. And although this often will not lead to problems, it can cause distal vessel perforation, which can be challenging to treat. So the next step is to essentially reposition the wire further down into the OM2, which will also facilitate delivery of stents because the wire portion covering the lesion will be the stiffer part of the wire and not the distal floppy portion. However, this was very challenging. You can see here the wire keeps on bending. But keeps on going into this branch. Um, we retracted it, but again without much success. Eventually, what did the trick is getting the wire further back, and then we were able to put a loop at the distal end, and that prevented us from going into the side branch. So in cases like this, where the wire keeps on entering side branches, one way to overcome this challenge is to create a loop on the wire. And this is a workhorse wire, but still a loop can be formed and then using the loop which prevents the wire from going into small branches and then advances further down into the main vessel. So knuckle wire can help wiring past a small branch. We finally changed our plans and instead of using the mini crust technique, we thought in a different way. This was a Medina 001 side branch bifurcation, but if we look at the size of the OM2 and the size of the distal circumflex, actually the OM2 is larger than the distal circumflex. So one can argue that actually the main vessel is the mid cirque going into the OM2 and the distal cirque is actually the branch. So when we think about this in those terms, then it becomes a 0 1 0, so 0 1 0 bifurcation. And provisional stenting is the best way for treating that, and that's exactly what we did. That was a 2.5 millimeter stent that was deployed. Then we did the proximal optimization technique, and a nice final result was achieved. So several interesting observations from this case. The first one is about classification. Uh, side branch uh, or branch ostia lesions are Medina 001. For angulation 90 degrees, this stenting is the way to go, however, for less uh, the 70 degree angulation, mini crush is the most commonly used technique. Third, it's important to keep uh, the limbs of both the operator and the patient out of the image, both for clarity of the image and for reducing radiation dose. Fourth, knuckle wires can be helpful for avoiding the wire entering into branches. And then finally, a different way to approach bifurcations 001 or branch ostial bifurcations if the size of that vessel is the same or larger than the distal portion of the so-called main vessel is to actually consider it as a 010 as a distal main vessel lesion and perform provisional standing jailing what was initially considered to be the continuation of the main vessel thank you